I'm making this video today to hopefully give you inspiration and hope and steps that I took to know that things can change. I'd been depressed, it seemed like, for waves throughout much of my life. Majorly starting when I was around 15, 16 years old. And to give you context, I'm about three months away, less than three months from my 22nd birthday. And I was suicidally depressed between, had spurts between 17 and 18 and then during my 19th birthday when I was, I had just moved out the house the past few months, I had been pretty physically sick as well. I had had all these internal battles that I had been fighting. I had, Everything had built up to a point where when I was living in Brooklyn for a little bit, I was sleep deprived and I remember I was standing on top of the rooftops in this apartment complex. And I was just sitting there. I didn't sleep that night. And I was like, maybe I should just at least just sit on the edge give myself a rush, right? If I don't care about my life, I might as well give myself something to entertain myself or some kind of purpose. Like I've seen the YouTube videos where people climb on skyscrapers. Maybe it'll give me some kind of alleviation. And I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about it. Actually, I just couldn't do it. Something held me back. And I guess I went to sleep. And I also remember one of the worst pains that I felt it was one of the most unbearable nights. And I was in upstate New York at this point. This was right around that week of my 19th birthday was the worst time of my life ever. I was by myself. I was in this place. I was living by myself with nobody around me. I had literally this entire house to myself because it was normally rented for college students and they're all gone. So I just I was laying there and I couldn't fall asleep. That's how much pain I was in where I was like just trying to end that day, you know, and I had just gotten some medication from this doctor and I was like, I could really just OD. I could really just, really just take it. You know, and there's so many points in my life where I tried over and over and over again. And I just, it seemed like every time I, I got somewhere, the rug was pulled out from under me and I was back in this spiral of depression and hating myself and shame and addiction. And and I'm really glad I can make this video now because in the past when I was trying to pump out videos a lot of times i would research something and it would maybe work for a week or two and i would try to spread it to the world and i feel like there might be a lot of videos like that out there right now and but this is something that i would say around 20 after a year i i, I could really say that i i was stable you know I still had bouts of depression, but I wasn't suicidally depressed. I wasn't here anymore. I'd raised, I'd raised up a bit. And then, and then from, you know, around, around 20 to 21, I discovered, I discovered another mindset change that, that really lifted me up. So there are some things that were just basic human needs that, I, that lifted me out of the worst depression. And there are things that lifted me to a point of where I could say I'm, I'm well adjusted now, you know, not only in terms of the results that society wants where 
you know, I'm, I'm back in school. I, I had failed out when I was majorly depressed. I got all zeros. I never even showed up to withdraw from my semester, so I got all zeros on my GPA. And I'm back in school now. I'm doing well. You know, I got, I repaired a lot of relationships. I, <laughs> I can say I'm much happier now. I'm not perfect by any means. And I don't think anybody is always at at great levels, but I'm at the point where I'd say I'm doing I'm doing good, you know. And this video can hopefully show you the steps that I took. And again, I'll say this is I'm I'm not a doctor. I'm, I can't give you medical advice, so this is not medical advice for psychotherapy advice I, I don't know uh, what <laughs> you know what I'm saying but these were the steps I took and they weren't over the top magnificent you have to grind your life away to to get past that no these were steps that were attainable and you'll see what I mean when I run through the list and I, I really hope that you can get value out of this so let's get started with step one out of five Starting with step one out of five for me, which was just sleeping regularly and eating three meals a day. That took out, like, I was experiencing some of the worst pains of my life. I couldn't sleep. I was really, there were times where I was standing on the edge of a, like a tall building. And but really, just sleeping, and I'm talking about sleeping on a certain time every night. So eight to nine hours a day. Try to get nine if you're going through it. Um, try to get nine. My mentor was like, yeah, your sleep schedule is all jacked up. <laughs> you know, like, just sleep at 10 p.m. every day, sleep for nine hours a day, wake up at seven, and you'll feel a lot better. And if you can't sleep because my sleep schedule was like at 4 a.m. one night, then 6 a.m. the next night, then I tried to sleep well at 12 a.m. the next night, and then I tried to pull it on, like, I was going wild with it, right? And when you're not getting sleep, you, you get fucked up. So she was like, yeah, if you need medication, take some, uh, some diphenhydramine. That was what she recommended for me. And it, it alleviated so much pain just to do that. And this worked in conjunction with eating three meals a day, three square meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I would suggest vegetables because they help you feel better. But yeah, also just eating. Sleeping and eating are like two of the most basic things that a human being needs. And when you're depressed, you, you don't even have the energy to do that or it's all messed up, but those two things can really help and that's step one you know if you need if you need to take diphenhydramine uh, it might be something something to take right uh, some people like melatonin step two was medication and uh, some of you guys might might not like this I, I grew up in a household where you don't want to take pills you know what I mean you want to get the natural way to solve your problems but in terms of a solution that but in terms of if you're going through it right now and you're like suicidal or it's something that just hasn't been alleviated and you need to get out of bed to start doing things that are positive for you like working out or or maybe having the energy to cook better food you know healthier food for you then this can help you and uh, my mentor like after i'd gone a new prescription for citalopram um <clears throat> she she told me you could take like i believe it was 2.5 or 5 uh mg per day and you know see see how you feel it, she called it a sub therapeutic dose where it's not necessarily gonna gonna change too much but it's gonna raise that floor you're down here you can't even get out of bed it'll help you at least start moving and start, you know, like doing simple tasks again. So medication, if you can see a doctor 
that can be really valuable to you because look the if you look up the research people might say well uh this therapy didn't work for me or this medication didn't work for me but if you actually try a bunch of different ones your chance of success keeps going up depression is something that is is curable nowadays I don't know what keeps making that sound, but it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> what the fuck? Step three was actually one of the hardest things for me to do. You know, it's... It's very hard to ask for help sometimes, and... The third step is people. People that care about you, or... Even if you feel like you really can't talk to anybody, which a lot of times that, that really is just a feeling or that is something that isn't necessarily true, you know? And I want to say this in this video, I love you. Um, I think we're all interconnected, this world. Like, even if I don't know you, you're my brother, you're my sister, like, I love you. Um, and... I wish the best for y'all. That, that's why I make this video. And obviously there's there's levels to love, like, you know, romantic love and all that. But to say this, like, I, I hope you know that somebody in the world out there cares for you. There are people like therapists, you know, and if you if you don't think you can afford it, there there may be options that you can look into, things that the state can offer you, or maybe your insurance does cover it, or maybe you know, or some people offer, um, if you don't make enough right now to afford it, they offer a sliding scale, right? Uh, I've called suicide hotlines before. Um, I've typed online. They've had the typing ones too, where you talk to someone live. And those have helped me, where I was like, bro, my, my life should be good. Why the fuck do I feel so, like, why the fuck am, do I feel so fucked up? And I'm cursing up to God and I'm screaming in my car. Like, they were nice where I would go out to a parking lot and just be screaming because I was in so much pain and I was pissed off at, like, why, why I was dealt this hand. Like, why I couldn't just be happy, you know? But to give you my experience, I, I had my best friend from high school. I met him in middle school. He, he would talk to me. He would be there for me when I needed to call him. He would, he would check up on me. And I'm forever, I'm forever grateful for him. No matter what, like I, I love him to the death, you know what I mean? Because he, he was one of the people that saved my life. And at the time, I, 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 just, I didn't really have too many people that I felt like I could reach out to. He was one of pretty much two people. And the other person was my mentor that I, that I talked about before. Um, and she also, she also really helped save my life. And I, I feel mixed sometimes because Part of her advice, I felt like, led me down a path where I blamed my parents for a lot of things, where I was stuck in a rut where I was always pissed off, and it might actually led me to more depression. But in that moment, no matter what, I can't, I, I'm grateful for what she, she helped me with, too. You know, so she was there for me. And being able to just talk with them gave me another light. It let me know if somebody gave a fuck about me. Like, somebody really cared about me and I'm again forever grateful and it was one of the hardest things to do to pick up the phone and say hey I need help you know to express that shit the fourth step for me and I didn't mention this yet too was that not only was I internally fucked up it was also physically for almost a year I think I really couldn't breathe out my nose um, I had I had pledged a fraternity, um, and it wasn't that they caused this necessarily. It was just that you're in an environment where I got sick, and then I think I got like some kind of respiratory infection, um, and I never took care of it because, again, I didn't believe in doctors growing up. I believed in all the natural methods. So I tried every natural method before I ever even attempted to go to a doctor months later. And that probably hurt my body a lot. I, I could really barely have energy to do anything. I, I also dropped out of college at the time. I got, I got all Fs. I had all zeros. You know, I, was, I, I couldn't really 
yeah. And I was also dealing with, was trying to move out on my own and strained relationships and everything. And I was like, but I couldn't breathe for a year. Even after I like finally took the antibiotics and maybe like got necessarily infections, like I was coughing up like green every day for like three to six months maybe. Like in that ballpark, it was crazy. And then the next year after that, like I really just couldn't, that's why I, like I quit smoking too. Cause I was like, bro, I, I care about my breath. I had a year where I couldn't breathe. <laughs> but I think also that also just, what, what I'm saying here is step four was taking care of my physical health. First off getting those antibiotics. And then after that, I was still so sensitive, I think, because after a whole year, it was just your body going through it. Even dust was like, I just couldn't breathe. Like it had to be like perfect circumstance. So I tried Flonase, that didn't work. I was thinking about getting like surgery for my nose. Or I was getting like CT scans. I, like, I was trying to do whatever and trying to find a deal on it too, because I couldn't afford, someone like quoted me 10K for a CT scan. I, I found one for 200. Um, fucking scammers. Uh, but, bro, like, yeah, and I got for 200 and they said, no, your, your nose is fine. Um, and I, for whatever reason, I didn't believe his allergies. And I finally took like Zyrtec and I finally just like vacuumed the shit out of my apartment that I was in. And a lot of it cleared up. It felt a lot better. And it also took time for my body to heal because it went through such a bad infection that I didn't take care of. But over time after that, you could breathe, you have more energy. When your physical is feeling right too, um, that's a big help. So if you have any physical ailments, that's something to, to be aware of. And also working out, my mentor said, hey, one of my friends told me, if you start running, you'll never be depressed. And I, I have some doubts in that, but, you know, it gets your blood flowing, right? You know, instead of you're, like, if you're sitting at home and you're, you're eating not great food and you have, like, we have microplastics in the air all the time, like, our blood isn't that clean no more. But if you get that moving throughout your whole body, if you sweat out some toxins, um, you know, if you, if you let your body move, it, it can really help. And again, that's why going back to medication, it, it might just help you raise that floor a little bit. Um, yeah. <sighs> I just took a little breather. The fifth step for me was cognitive behavioral therapy or I assume there are other therapy modalities that you could use as well and and really just a mindset change you know after I'd taken care of my sleep and eating like basic health so that was one after I'd taken medication over time I'd actually tapered off it and still felt okay um, let me, I, I have a list here <laughs> after I knew that I had my people with me, right? And being able to reach out to people. Sometimes I couldn't reach out to my friend, you know, his, his life, he had things that he was going through too, but even just again, calling a hotline or even speaking online with one of those hotlines, like a text one, those helped out. And then also just getting, taking care of those physical ailments. I would have times where I wasn't like majorly, majorly depressed, but I could definitely fall back into that slump. And what I realized over time was a lot of it was just up here. A lot of it had to do with me not, <laughs> a lot of it had to do with, a lot of it had to do with just me not thinking logically to be plain and simple i've always thought i'm a smart guy you know but there are things internally that are just automatic thought processes right uh, one example is never giving yourself credit it's called disqualifying the positive i would do something like it kind of ties hand in hand with a uh, mental filter which is only focusing on the negative so i could i even launched a book but then I would focus on, oh, but I didn't get enough sales or, oh, I didn't, I maybe didn't charge enough here. Or, you know, I, I would always focus on 
something I did wrong instead of ever just congratulating myself, right? Or being content with the job that I did and knowing that I'm not perfect. That I'm not a robot. I'm a human being, not a human doing is a phrase that some of y'all may have heard before. There are times too where you magnify events where I would blow things way out of proportion. It would be like the end of the world, but it was really not that huge. Um, other things too, like thinking I could read people's minds, thinking that they had this certain horrible intention when it turns out they, they didn't even really think twice about it. They just either made a mistake or you know, they just thought that was a normal thing to do. Um, I thought they were like out here trying to, trying to scam me or hurt me or whatever, you know? Um, so one book that I, I would highly suggest, or if you want to go to therapy, uh, the modality is cognitive behavioral therapy. The book that I use was by David Burns. It's called Feeling Good. I got it for free on Amazon. And this isn't sponsored. And I, I don't know if I would even sponsor a video like this because I want y'all to know that this is real. This ain't, <laughs> I'm not here to push a product or a course. You know what I mean? Not that I'm saying courses can't work or therapy can't work because those cost money, but it's easier to know that somebody's telling the truth when they don't necessarily have a financial motive outside of, you know, whatever AdSense revenue I could gain. <sighs> but anyways, uh, yeah, and maybe that therapy method doesn't work for you, but it's been... I, Proven is a, is a weird word to say, but it's been shown to be effective for many people. Um, and I, I'll, I'll show a list of some of the studies that y'all might be interested in taking a look at. But I, I wouldn't think too hard on it. I would go with your gut and like, what do you think will work? And if this doesn't work, you can try another modality, right? Um, at least that's what I think. And also, alongside mindset change was also learning to Oh, it's even tough now sometimes where learning to tolerate your feelings and this is what my mentor talked about when you're feeling bad don't just run to your addiction take two minutes and clear your head or if you can't clear your head keep a benign image in there like uh, purple elephants jumping over a log you know something just so that you're not thinking necessarily and just focus on the emotions deep breath in all the way down to your all the way down to if you're a dude, your balls, you feel me? Deep breath all the way in and deep breath out. And I'll link a video um, to something pertinent. Um, or I, I, again, I'm hesitant because I feel like some of her things were too extreme on blaming. And it was exactly what the mindset is it, hard to explain, but learning to tolerate my feelings. And if you guys have questions down below, I might like PM you the the link to her videos um you know what i mean but yeah learning to just be be there all learning to feel that depression learning to feel that anxiety i was able to go on stage and perform because of that before i, I would like try to rush in my head and try to explain oh you don't don't be nervous like nah i just learned how to tolerate my nervousness you know, I, I learned how to approach people, how to be real with people and express myself and confront people and say I love you to people and like all these things because I could tolerate my emotions because I wasn't running from them no more. And that helped me grow so much. Just breathing in for two minutes and clearing my head and just feeling that shit, you know. So those were really the two big things that worked for me. And the last thing, this is like a star after those five, because this is also what I think may be a huge key that I haven't really, I, I've kind of been there in my life, which is faith or God or religion. What like, and I'm not necessarily talking about a specific one. I was reading a book by, or not by Steve Jobs, but a biography on Steve Jobs. And I think I have a similar mindset where it's, 
many of these doors, many of these religions, many of these doors lead to the same house. That's, that's where I'm at right now in my thought process. So I'm not thinking about a specific one. But the one that I probably know most about is Christianity. And trying to will yourself out of this yourself is such a monumental task when you can't even get out of bed. You know, I've tried to do everything by myself my whole life. And I realized that today when I was just listening to a service um, that my girl put me on. Uh, and... Yeah, like having faith in, in, in having faith in, in God or having faith in something, like knowing that these things happen for a reason, these, these can all help out so much. Like, and it's crazy for me to say this because I had already kind of gotten through my suicidal depression without necessarily I guess, yeah, I'd say like I was like mid there. Like I, I, I had always believed in God because, you know, I kind of just grew up that way. Like God's going to bless me and take care of me. But a lot of times where I fell out of that because I'm like, bro, why the fuck you give me all this shit for? I mean, why'd you give me this hand in life? But I still, I still believed. Um, but I really do think, and it's helped me with my anxiety a lot of times too. I think that's why I have, or I have such a conviction for this is, yeah, having faith that I look around and I see all this beauty every single day. I, I personally don't think this shit was an accident. You know what I mean? And yeah, bad shit happens. And that's the reason why I lost a lot of faith was I was like, well, people dying, there's fucking wars. There's my own shitty situations like fuck this, but I have faith, and I think people that have a faith can, can, it can really, like, they can take on that burden and not try to, try to take, so the service today was about having a thorn in your side, and not necessarily, like, lessening the burden or taking away that thorn, but pretty much embracing it and taking God's grace and, and rolling with it and actually being appreciative that because of this shit that you're going through, you're going to be stronger. You know what I mean? Like, it might not look like it in the moment. It might, it might even take a long time. It might. I I really don't know. Everybody has a different circumstance, but I hope, I hope at the end of the day where I'm at right now, I can say this, is I really lost, lost hope for the longest time. I was on on the edge of that building. I was thinking I couldn't stand this shit no more. After all those years of trying and trying and trying to make my life better, it just wasn't happening. And I can say now with, with certainty that I made it out. Like my little homie would always say, break the cycle, Kev, you know? And I promise you that things will change. I love y'all. Peace out.